Hey everyone, how are you doing? It's Patrick from Vicious Computers and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be doing an indoor solar lab experiment. It's been dreary and overcast for days, so no good solar. I have two solar experiments to do, so I'm actually setting this one up as a lab, which works fine. And that's also the benefit of recently buying and building those power supplies is it lets me do things like this. So today's video, let me explain what you're looking at. It actually serves two purposes. This can be your automatic copy and pasta paste uh, to anyone who says you cannot run an MPPT without a battery because we're going to show that that's not true. And second, more my style. Today I'm going to show you how to hack something. And what we'll be doing is we're going to be simulating a large solar panel that has too much power to plug into a small power station without destroying it. So what we're going to be doing essentially is using our own MPPT as a middleman, as a voltage converter, so that we can downstep the voltage to prevent the smaller power station from getting fried. So this gives you a way to basically hack your power stations and either use more solar or larger existing solar that you already have. All right, so real quick, before we actually start going through the steps to show you what's gonna happen and how you do it, let's take a closer look at the setup itself, just so you know what every piece of the equipment is doing. Right now we have this power supply. This is an RD6030, and we have it configured to send out 60 volts of DC power, uh, and we've limited it to about 10 amps. Right now that power is coming out of the power station or out of the power supply. It's uh, going into the PV input for this MPPT from Victron. So we're simulating the power that we'd be getting from a solar panel. Uh, in this case, these solar panels are producing at 60 volts and 10 amps. And then the battery out, and so instead of having a battery connected to this, instead I've terminated this into an XT60i connector, which I'm sure you're familiar is the connector that we use for most of these power stations to plug in our solar. So now the MPPT is going to be acting as the solar panels to the power station. Uh, I've got a couple of tools here. We've got a, a volt, uh, multimeter. I'm just going to show you some voltages. And I also got an amp clamp meter so I can show you the amperages. And that'll kind of give you some measurements to see what's happening. And then there's the actual app on the phone that I'm going to open up first. And then I'll show you what's inside of the app. All right, so before we go jump onto the lab equipment, let's go look at the Victron app real quick. It's paired by Bluetooth. This is all built right into these smart solar systems. And then we're gonna show you what the, oops, we just clicked on the wrong one. I picked up the office. Um, you can configure all these settings from the app. It's very convenient. And we can see a lot of our data in here. So as you can see right now, just from this screen, there's a very small amount of power being consumed. Uh, we're, we're detecting 60 volts of power coming in as solar with like zero current because there's no load right now. And then the battery, it's showing that we're sending out about 28 volts of power. And uh, let's go into the actual setting settings. And we'll go into the battery side. And here you can see this is where we can set the battery voltage. And we can even set a max charge current. So this is really awesome because this acts as a safety. So for example, I am using 10 gauge wire for this particular experiment. So I could set say 20 amps as my max current and know that I'm protecting myself from overdriving those wires. So not only is this gonna expand the capabilities of your power station and let you do a lot of really cool tricks and hacks, but it can even increase the safety factor. So just for the sake of this experiment though, since I'm not outside today with a lot of solar power, my power supply is only doing 60 volts. I wanted to show you a really big step down. So I'm stepping it down to 24 volts and the river three that we're using as a demonstration today would uh, max out at 50 volts, which means we could not send the 60 volts directly to it, it would fry it. So that's what the configuration of the app looks like. I'll just leave this recording in case we wanna come back to it why I show you the, the lab environment. So one thing I wanna call attention to right away is always measure first before you do anything. Now I've been experimenting with this stuff for a while, so I'm familiar with it. But sometimes the more familiar you get, the more you're likely to make a mistake because you get complacent. So always measure, even if you know what you're doing. And the first thing to check for is 
I, I can't see the camera frame now, so I'm hoping we're in focus, but the, the XT60i connector, the square side of it needs to be your positive. So I'm gonna just take my multimeter and connect both probes here, which without trying to shock myself, because <laughs> I have giant probe tips on here right now. So I do have my positive 28 volts I just saw in there. So that's uh, the right polarity. I just wanted to show you how to measure polarity. For me, what I had actually planned on doing was just the screw terminals inside of here are, they make a very easy way for me to measure this particular situation. There you go. <laughs> so the battery side, which is what we're sending out, if we go and measure that, we have 27.5 volts, but the photovoltaic input, which is the solar side coming from the power supply, you can see we're getting 60 volts. The amps we can't measure until we get the, the load. So let's go ahead and connect it now that we know the polarity is correct. And we know that the power, the voltage is not going to uh, do any damage because we're within the specs. So now I hear the fan kicking up on the power supply. It's definitely doing something. Over here on the river, I see now that we have an input of 220 watts, which is the max for this. So we're getting max solar input from a solar panel, in quotes, that technically would be maxed beyond max for this and it would have fried it and it's working perfectly. Now we can go back, measure voltages again, and then we can measure our amps. And the phone is still recording, so you'll see all this on the app as well. So I'll probably just overlay this. So let's go back to the battery side, measure plus and minus. We're at 27.5. And on the photovoltaic side, 59.7. So that's perfect. Now you can see the voltage difference where that's coming from is in the amps because wattage is equal to voltage times amperage, current times volts. So if we go and clip this on, we should see almost double the current on one side versus the other since we're about half the voltage. So yep, about double the amperage, half the voltage. That's what the MPPT does. I have another video that I need to make actually going into how MPPTs work because see, here's the thing. I call these hacks, but they're not really hacks. It's just knowledge. It's either electrical engineering and electronics in general, uh, knowing how they work and then making them work outside of their scope that they were sold to you as a customer. And so you can call it a hack if you want, but it's just really sharing knowledge. Now the MPPTs, how they actually work, nobody's really explained that in any video I've seen. And I'm going to make a video explaining how they actually work and the reason why you cannot hook up more than one MPPT to a single, single set of solar panels. But the reason why you can hook an MPPT, more than one of them to a battery like I have set up in the office. So I'm going to explain why that electrically and scientifically works out and why it's safe to do that. So that should be all you need for this video. I hope everyone uh, found it educational and entertaining. Once again, this was Patrick from Vicious Computers, and I'll see you next time.